What's that? Mm. 2008. Oh. 2009. Yeah. I got to keep going until 2020. <laughs> Two. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> January 6th. <laughs> oh, January 6th was not Trump's fault. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Column Tyrrell podcast. I'm your host, Column Tyrrell. We're going to have a quick episode today. The boys are busy. Um, and if you want to get more of the podcast, maybe consider head over to patreon.com slash column Tyrrell. You get an extra episode every week. It's only $5. You get an extra episode. And for $10, which is the... The, um, the best crew to be in, the Guinness time crew. They get video and they also get all the back catalogue of previous episodes. Plus they get behind the scenes footage plus stand-up comedy uh, clips. So head over to patreon.com slash column to help support the growth of this podcast. Also, I am uh, performing stand-up comedy all over the country. We've got dates coming up in uh, Vegas, Los Angeles, um, New Jersey, coming up this week in Point Pleasant, Boston this weekend. If you want to see me live, uh, head off to columntyrell.com. You can get all those tickets. Also, if you want to see me in your town or city, leave a comment where, or wherever you're watching or listening, and uh, I'll see them, and I'm, I'm going to try and uh, organize some shows there. This is it. It's a big year for Colm Tyrell, the comedian. Um, Colm Tyrell, the person. Terrible year. <laughs> Colm Tyrell, the comedian. What are you? Well, he's crushing it. <laughs> Colm Tyrell, the person. Never been sadder. Never been sadder. Um, I'm a big sad boy. Dot com. I'm going to change my podcast. Big sad boy. Dot com. Yeah. What if I rebranded as a sad boy? Just a little, just a little fucking, oh, I just go, you know, oh, my therapist or whatever. Paint your fingernails black. Paint my fingernails black. Yeah. yeah. Is that a sad boy? That's like too emo. Uh-huh. No, I would, the, the real sad boys don't even have the confidence to like do it. They just, every time you see them, they just, oh, they'll just somehow nudge. There's a lot of these sad boys and they just somehow always nudge the conversation to how life's not fair. <laughs> it's always, I'm talking to these guys and they just, they just did like a weekend at the Beacon Theater and they're just like, the industry, man, the industry. And you're like, dude, you're a millionaire. You're a millionaire. And, and of course your girlfriend left you. You suck. You're just a miserable cunt bringing up trauma. There's a thing called trauma bonding. Have you ever heard of that? No, actually. I, I don't even know what it is, but apparently it's like, a, it's again, it's another kind of a technique that this is, we live in a crazy world. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, folks. <laughs> Here on the Call Up Terror podcast with the last, the last bastion of freedom. <laughs> Um, we've got huge stuff coming up today. We got the fucking Trump. We got to deal with. Mm. We got uh, Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres. She was caught. <laughs> Turns out she has a penis. Did you hear that? This is, we got a scoop. We got the Ellen penis scoop. Um, only fans. It turns out have been like pretty much pimping out their whores. Um, so we got huge stuff coming up. But um, what was I just talking about? Oh, about the trauma bonding. The trauma bonding. Yeah. So back in the day, there was guys who were just able to manipulate women, I guess. Because women have weak souls. Get the fuck out of here! All right? So they're <laughs> easily manipulated by men for some reason. I don't know what it is. It's like a default program. Um, it's like the way uh, we, we think uh, kids and dogs are cute. There's something about our brain that says, don't kill it. You know? But as soon as a baby... When does a baby stop being cute? Like 10? Or what, time, what age is like you feel good killing it? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like if I kill the uh, if I kill the baby, that's fucked up. But if I just kill a man, if I kill a man who's break, if a guy breaks into my house and I just fucking pop his head off with a fucking my musket, I have a musket by the way. <laughs> I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. I think that I think you have the right to bear arms, but it has to be muskets. Mm-hmm. Um, you got you got to do the You're whole loading, you got to do the whole fucking yeah, whole shake weight thing. You yeah. know? No, I'm mi- I'm miming a musket. <laughs> Don't fucking clip this. Go to the other camera. It looks like he's doing it. I'm not. I'm, mo- I'm cleaning out two muskets. One more time. One more time. All I'm doing is cleaning out two muskets in case I'm intru- unless, uh, in case the British are intruding. Mm. That's what that mime was. <laughs> and, I, and I was sucking on a cock. <laughs> also, at the same time. But um, the techniques were to... Um, there was, there was like an evolutionary thing or something where men, where women love to be manipulated by men. Anyway, the point is, is they brought forward all these techniques. Gaslighting, love bombing, trauma bonding. These are all techniques that it's like, it's like I never jumped the turnstile at the, the, at the train in the subway. It's 250 a swipe or whatever. And I would just never do it. 
Now I just do it all the I jump I just jump it all the time because I was like reading all these articles all day, every day going millions of people are are jumping the turnstiles. And I was like, yo, what the fuck am I what am I doing? Paying like a chump? Yeah. Like a dickhead? Sucker. Now it's like now it's like oh, they've got like a little handbook on how to manipulate your girlfriend it's with all these <laughs> techniques. They're like, here are some common techniques from like legends, right? From the from the boys who know what they're doing. <laughs> Gaslighting. Never like now I as soon as I'm single again, I'm gonna have all these like techniques to just I'm gonna gaslight like a motherfucker. <laughs> so what's the howtogaslight.com <laughs> is what we need to go on to and figure out how to really get what we want from our loved ones. You gotta lock up that domain. You gotta locked up what gaslight.com, <laughs> howtogaslight.com. Um that could be that would work. Gaslight.com just sends them my fucking stand up comedy dates. <laughs> um how to gaslight.com, exactly. Yeah, it's it's available. How to make an app. Patriot food. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, the point of being <laughs> is if you need to know how to use these things, the, the internet's right there. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of guys were just like, wait a second, I can just lie to them? Or I can convince them that they're crazy? Isn't that the whole <laughs> thing about gaslighting? You go, yeah. I'll see you on Wednesday. We're going for dinner on Wednesday. We're mm-hmm. going for dinner on Wednesday. I will see you for dinner on Wednesday. And then she shows up and you're not there. You go, I said Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I never said that. Yeah. Why would I ever even invite you out for dinner, you <laughs> fat pig cunt? <laughs> you fat Pig, ginger cunt. She's like, I'm not ginger. You're a fat. I didn't say that. I said you're a fat fucking. I didn't say that. That's it. Dude, your whole life just go. No, I didn't. No. Nah. Like I've got video evidence. No, you're crazy, baby. You're crazy. You're always acting so crazy. Um, which is interesting because I've got a crazy girlfriend that I'm always convincing, trying to convince her that she's not crazy. <laughs> like, no, 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 baby, it's fine. So she's like, I'm crazy. I'm gonna kill myself. You're not. You're not. It's me, baby. I'm you're here. just spiritual. You're just some. You just got passion. You're Italian. You're not crazy. Of course, you're not throw a cast iron pan at my head because <laughs> I didn't text you once. You're not crazy at all. So there's and then just love bombing, which is when you meet a girl and you just like again. That's another Italian thing where they just go, I love oh, yeah. you. You're the, you're, the, you're the diamond in my eye. You're the apple of the sky. And I've never felt love. I, this is the one. I'm, I'm, I'm Cupid's arrow shot me in the ass. I love you. This is it. Can't you feel it? And then you go, see ya. <laughs> Once that pussy start to stank, you go, see ya. Pussy goes stale. What's the name of today's episode? <laughs> What's that guy, Andrew T? Is that oh, the type yeah. of stuff he goes? Pussy go stale. High value male. Um, that's a high value male? Yeah. No, the guy who died, the black guy who died was the high value male uh, well guy. Then I think he's the heir to it. At Is least. he the heir yeah, to the yeah. throne? Uh-huh. Oh, of course. Because the black, remember we did a whole episode on that black guy. It kind of worked like timeline wise too. He just filled right into that void. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it, but it's all a gimmick, right? Can we all accept that these guys, look, a lot of these men just need to believe that there's some sort of a, <laughs> we are the superhero, you're the James Bond, but you're not James Bond. <laughs> you're the guy who cleans up the people that James Bond killed. You're a maid. You are the maid in the James Bond movie, but we're supposed to be like, oh, go treat your woman like shit and she won't leave you. Which only, all this stuff only works with hood rats, by the way. All these techniques, it's always just some ghetto bitch. Like, <laughs> it's like some skanky whore who's like, yo, I ain't getting no job. You go earn this money. None of that works with a white woman who's no. just like, no, I, my dad has money. Fuck off. I don't need you around my house. I can afford, I can afford like a fucking a dildo. I don't need you. <laughs> so if you want to get yourself a fucking ratchet ass whore, yeah, follow all these techniques. Um, but what's, so that's, the, that's what love bonding is. But what's trauma bonding? Trauma is when you, I think you share horrible things, mm-hmm. like oh my uncle raped me or something, yeah, it says, and then that and that makes women feel sorry for you, so then they suck you off. Yeah, trauma bonding. Because wait, wait, yeah. wait hold, before we go on, I you would assume that trauma <laughs> bonding is like a, oh my dad was mean to me, and then they go, oh my dad was also mean to me. Look at look look, we both had mean fathers. That's mm-hmm. what it sounds like, but I do think it's literally you just unloading all of your shit on them and it gets so heavy that and you're like so sad that they kind of just let you slide inside them oh, God. and then you just go <laughs> diggity <laughs> diggity got another one <laughs> diggity and right in our ear you're like wait did you just say diggity <laughs> diggity <laughs> giggity yeah did you just say giggity <laughs> what is it 1998 <laughs> um all right trauma bonding is the attachment is the attachment an abused person feels for their abuser Specifically in a relationship with a cynical pattern of abuse. 
Oh. Uh, this isn't what I thought. I didn't. This isn't what, what I this thought at like all. This uh, is Stockholm. Stock, yeah, Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome. The bond is created due to a cycle of abuse and positive reinforcement. After each circumstance of abuse, the abuser professes love, regret, or otherwise tries to make a relationship feel safe and needed for the abused person. So it's like guilt. You go up to them and go, you fat ginger cunt, you fat bitch slut face cunt. I didn't say that. And then you go, I love you. I've always loved you. What are you, what are you talking about? You're the, love, you're the apple of my eye. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a lot of great, um, there's a lot of great, uh, r you know, reading materials and articles out there for you guys to learn how to control your bitch. <laughs> now <laughs> it was supposed to be like how not to do this thing. Yeah. Now it's just like it's a pure, it's just a one on one, you know, um, abuse abuse for dummies. They've done a re release a book for dummies and be like right, abuse, well, for yeah. uh, abuse for abuse for. Abuse for dummies, and then chapter four, trauma bonding. Mm -hmm. How to get these bitches in line. <laughs> and it's written like by a pimp. It's like, yo, <laughs> it's like written in like a black kind of <laughs> slang. Sup, motherfuckers. <laughs> chapter three. Chapter three. There you go. Chapter three, trauma bonding. <laughs> trauma bonding is one reason that leaving an abusive situation can feel confusing and overwhelming. It involves positive and are loving feelings for an abuser, making the abused person feel attached to and dependent on the abuser. I might do this. I might have this. I might have a little thing of this. Mm. My girl's my girl's been acting very nice lately. <laughs> I no, you know what it is? Is she skates to the line? Uh, yeah. She skates right up to that line, like a mother, like a cliff. She'll go right up, and then like there's like <laughs> there's like a fence that says "Do not go any further," and there's like a fucking sign right on this cliff edge and it says like are you feeling suicidal ring this number and she climbs over the fence despite <laughs> saying do not go and then she gets right to the edge and it's like Pfft, and a stone will fall and then she goes all right i'm gonna have to start behaving now <laughs> she knows she knows i go every single time i go one more fucking thing out of her i'm breaking up with her and then she just she just shuts her mouth now for four weeks <laughs> she shuts her fucking dumb now so maybe i'm being the trauma bonded what is it uh, anyway, it started in 1997. Whatever. Fuck all that stuff. <laughs> anyway, that's like the ins and outs of whatever. Yeah. Okay, rolling. The Column Tarot Podcast is brought to you by Sheet Under, where every week or other week, we come and talk to you about how well our balls smell. We're known as the best ball-smelling uh, group of comedians and podcasters pr and producers that um, rock the East Coast everywhere we go. That's why we we always like just gargle each other's balls. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, "Yo, how? Why is your show so good?" It's because we we like to teabag each other. <laughs> and you should have when Johnny first came in here, his balls smelled like a fucking homeless woman's snatch oh. and nasty. But I would I would because I'm such a nice guy, I would teabag him anyway. <laughs> and then we would leave like hints. We would never tell them. We would just go, "Yo, dude, like a f <laughs> we we your nuts smell like a dying cat." We never we didn't say that, but we would just like leave like Febreze and stuff around. And then because of sheet, Johnny went and bought himself some sheet underwear. And now his nuts smell like a fucking <laughs> like a like a summer's eve in a meadow. <laughs> and it's really it's nice for when um, I teabag him. And when he teabags me, it's like it's like a nice little bond that we got going on. And look, it's getting hot. It's getting sticky out there. It's uh, let's help keep the heat off your balls with sheet. And um, they were invented by a guy who was in the army, which means they're obviously better <laughs> than other. Like, choose it. How, where would you even know where your underwear has been invented by? This was invented by a guy who blew the fucking head off some dirty fucking terrorists, right? He sh he went over to Iraq or whichever fucking country he was in, and he went pop, 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 and he fucking, sure, it was some collateral damage. That happens. When you're spreading freedom, you don't accidentally kill an orphanage every now and again. But I'll tell you, that's not what we're here today. We're not here to talk about the war machine, right? We're not here to talk about the industrial um, military complex in this country. We're talking about getting your nuts teabagged by some slut down at the Jersey Shore. And the only way they'll do that is if you head over to sheetunderwear.com and use the promo code COLLI, that's C-O-L-L-I-E, and you get 20% off your first order now, there's probably a way for you to just re-register with a different email account and you can just keep using that account. That's what I would suggest because it's kind of built on an honor system. But you know what? You know what was? <laughs> it's built on an honor system. The type of system that we fucking taught to the Middle East that they didn't know. Those animals out there covering up their women, not washing their toes. They're disgusting. 
fucking US Army soldier Robert Patton lay down American freedom on foreign soil and pay him back by using the promo code COLLI, C-O-L-L-I-E, to get 20% off your first order on sheetunderwear.com. All right, back to the episode. Um, I'm feeling a little bit high today. I took um, some drugs last night. What did uh, I take? Yeah. I took a Benzy? Yeah, he said took some Benzos. Took a little Benzo. Yeah. Um, what is that? Is that heroin? It's it's not heroin. It's like does the same is it thing. The, what, what do you call that? It's in Xanax. I know that. It's in Xanax? Yeah. What's that? Um, what do they call? It is a sedative. A sedative. Yeah. It's not an opioid. No, that's the difference. Like opioids are in like heroin. Heroin. And then heroin is in opioids. That's true. Yeah, probably. Well, poppy is in <laughs> opioids. Yeah. Okay. And they make heroin. I don't know. I ask him. It's because your dumb ass voice is always so fun to hear you. Yeah. So use uh, the heroin. It's like fifty percent of my family went to rehab for heroin. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> you should know more than him. <laughs> you have no idea. Should we ring one of them? <laughs> anyway. Um. Oh yeah. We go to take a take a, a call from the the fucking yeah. Mommet <laughs> County Jail or what, whatever. How do you think you pronounce my last name? I don't know. Never. What Fonzarelli. is it? Fonzarelli. It's close enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alf- Alf- Alfonso. Isn't your first name Alfonso? Just Alphonse. Just Alphonse. Yeah. And then we... And Alphonse what? Fiella. Fiella? Yeah. I don't even know if I've ever seen your name. Yeah. Why would I want to? I figured you would on Instagram and just be like, that's just a bunch of gibberish, just a bunch of vowels. I, I saw now after the AL. Yeah. You got no, no one, <laughs> nobody important's name stands with AL. Absolutely not. Don't even look at it. Not yet, motherfucker. Does your girl still follow me on Instagram? Probably. I, I feel like she fucking unfollowed me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did, she didn't get the follow back, dude. <laughs> let her know her place. You grilled her, dude. She said, why, why didn't Kylie follow me back? I said, that's a good thing. Last thing we need. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, anyway, I did this pill last night and fucking was zonked, mm-hmm. absolutely zonked because, um, the girl has a bad back, so they we, we got access to some of these pills or something like that. I took one last night and fucking slept like I was gone. Mm. I was L. I was fucking living in a dream world, man. Yeah, but and then, then this morning I woke up, my alarm went off at like 10. And I was like, oh, I'll just go back to sleep. It was like you know, one o'clock by the time yeah. I got up. Yeah. But this, what killed them. Um, it's what fucking killed Whitney Whitney Houston. Apparently, I googled street name for her and they called them the Whitney Houstons. <laughs> really? These Bonzies. I guess that's why she fucking she was lobbing them in there, wow. lobbing them down her gullet, just <laughs> having a good old time. But it makes sense now. Chasing I'm like, it with some crack. Oh, great. Sure, <laughs> go nuts. I've never done any drugs really. Like I've never done any hard drugs. Mm. Like to me, coke and ket. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never done any opioids. I've always right. had, and pills. I've never had yeah, any right. pills in my life really. Yeah. But now I'm just like, I'm like, this is it. Have you ever done like I'm one not- of the? opioid pills like you know no i percocet or something i i did um the shit that all the podcasts are always peddling the um what's it called kratom yeah yeah Yeah, i'm uh, i've done kratom and i did nothing i think it kratom's i don't think it works i think Mm. kratom and cbd are just kratom definitely works does it? Yeah. Why you could you do kratom? Yeah, occasionally. Yeah. What type of kratom do you take? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the. I think it's the red. Uh, red strain. I, I don't know. Red strain. Yeah, it's a Ming Da or something. But um, if you mix in, if you make tea with it, it'll it'll fuck you up for sure. Um. Dump a whole is bunch it like of a, it. It's is like it a like a benzo? Like fuck up? Is that why you're talking it, about? It it's feels like... the same as like an opiate, like a poppy tea or, or like perks. <laughs> Okay. So it's supposed to be a legal heroin. <laughs> yeah, it's really similar. It's like a Suboxone. Yeah. It even tastes like poppy tea. It's weird. It does. Mm. Well, I just dropped some pills one time. Felt nothing. Nothing. It was like mm. CBD. It was just like whatever. Mm. Take more. Take more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Will I get hooked? You get liver uh, failure. I think you can't. You you just really want to. It kind of makes you feel shitty in a weird way, but. <laughs> yeah. No more so than you swallow that easy. You can't piss. Uh, you know, like you can't piss. Uh, you just have like trouble with it. It's Tr- trouble pissing. Thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I get that on, when I'm high. Sometimes mm. I'll go sit in the bathroom for an hour. You just, get stage fright sure. by yourself <laughs> on my own. Stage fright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just sitting there going, it needs to go, <laughs> and I can feel, I can feel like whatever my sphincter or whatever, just sort of kind of like, I'm like, come on. 
<laughs> yeah, and I just sit there for an hour out of my head. You go to I, definitely get, I definitely get, I definitely get that on shrooms and stuff. Oh yeah, sphincter issues on drugs, or even like like you look at your bird when you're on shrooms, you're like, that ain't mine. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about your cock? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, whose is that? It ain't mine. What's the left mine? What's the left mine in the living room? <laughs> I've never had that. <laughs> you never had a shriveled up cock on shrooms? I've Are you never kidding? Not recognized my own. <laughs> well, not, oh, not literally. I'm not like that's not yeah. my cock. Okay. Whose cock is that? Yeah. Who, Mr. Potato Man, my cock? You're walking around the party. Did that ever see my cock? <laughs> no, I think someone took my cock by accident. Did someone else take my cock? This doesn't look like mine. I was once at the gym once in Ireland, and I saw some like guy with a big black. He was a white guy, but he had a big black cock. <laughs> I walked by, it was like I couldn't, I walked by and he's just like, like an old guy, just like a typical 65 year old shitty body. Yeah. And then he just had this big fucking black hog <laughs> hanging off. his him. knees. Dude, it was crazy. <laughs> I mean, and I, like I, I saw it, like I walked by and I went, like I double, yeah. double take yeah. this guy's big black cock. <laughs> He's, and obviously he was just he's, looking at you like, I know. He's just hanging out. <laughs> yeah. But everything else, he looked horrible. He looked like fucking... I don't know, Mr. Burns or something with a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a, bit of a stumpy belly. Yeah. It's like, who needs, who needs to work out when you got a big black yeah. cock? <laughs> That's why uh, some of those porn stars are so disgusting, especially back in the day. It used to be mm. a lot of fun with those porn stars. All Ron bushed Jeremy. up. Yeah, they'd be, you're on Jeremy. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he looked, yeah he looked like he owned a pizza fucking. Yeah. He looked like he owned a pizzeria. He looked like one of Fonzie's fucking uncles. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Just that huge Italian hammer on him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now, now they want you to have abs and shit like that. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, so I, I'm, I'm, I might rebrand now as a little fucking a heroin addict or something. Maybe that's like my new thing just yeah. to get into. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's might be what I can do. Um, all right, this week... Um, a puck fair. I wanted to talk about this. In, in Ireland, there is a festival every year. It's called Puck Fair. P U C K F A I R, and it's an old Celtic festival. Like it's so old that it's like people don't know how it started. It's like there's no real. It says it takes place um, annually in August on the 10th and the 12th in County Kerry. It's in a tiny little village. And um, does it have the origin there? Really, the fair itself is. Anyway, the long story short, um, go scroll up. Stop. The fair itself is supposed to be an ain't supposed to be ancient, but can only officially be traced back to as far as 1613, when King James issued a charter granting legal status to the existing fair. Blah blah blah. Despite this fact, its roots are still unknown, although there are several legends of its origins. So pretty much, this is how fucking funny and it's almost like we're still pagans or like <laughs> we're witches and stuff yeah. in Ireland so every year what they do is um, they'll go up to the mountains and they'll find a wild goat mm. a male goat and they'll catch him <laughs> and it's uh, and it's not like it's not like Native Americans hunting buffalo I'm pretty sure they just like go and the goat will just walk just up. Grab like, it by the fucking beard. Yeah, yeah, just rip it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> grab his little billy goat beard. <laughs> um, and it's got to be a guy. And then they bring it down. And then um, they bring it down to the, 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 the village. And then they get a little schoolgirl. Who, who, oh. um, and she's known as Queen of the Puck. right? And Puck is just um, the Irish word for a male goat. And then they get the goat and they put it up in a cage. They, hang, they, they, they pull, up, pull it in the cage up above the town. And they just leave it up there for like three days. And then <laughs> some David Blaine shit. They bring it up to yeah, yeah, exactly. He's there's like a the, Mind Freak. There's probably like a live stream somewhere of just yeah, like there's yeah. like a, a GoPro in the corner. Case to nice. Exactly. He's up there now and he's just hanging out. What the hell? And then they have a big festival and there's a lot of stuff like cattle and stuff is bought and sold for the week and then they have a special late license most of the time the bars have to close at like midnight but for some reason they, they let them open till 3am mm, nice. um, in that particular village during the festival and then at the end of the festival they just take the, the goat down and then they let him back off into the wild go good luck <laughs> see you again bro <laughs> and he just fucking he just fucking scales the mountain he just scales the mountain and go, Woo, I'm free <laughs> um but it's the most fun. <laughs> it's probably the best. What's it like a cart? Like everyone's just getting all banged up down low? Yeah, it's just a bunch of fucking hillbillies and farmers and Love shit. That. And there's like Irish music and we're all just oh, drinking yeah. Guinness and you're buying shirts and you're just getting drunk all day. And people are buying and selling sheep. 
There's like a, <laughs> there's like a horse show. Go check out some nice horses. Mm -hmm. You know, just a bit of uh, traditional music. Some girls are doing like the mm -hmm. fucking Irish dancing. Nice. And you're just in the shittiest, smallest ancient village. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and then every time you go by, you go, all hail the puck. <laughs> oh, and they, they, they get down and they go, oh. <laughs> and uh, yeah. It's like and then, one part county fair, one part midsummer. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, it would be cool if they just killed them, though. That would be the best. At the very end, <laughs> just yeah. chop, exactly. they should chop off his head and hold him up above <laughs> yeah, the crowd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Apocalypto. Go, oh, Kubla. <laughs> and then they drop its head and it rolls down a pyramid. Yeah, big, We're not far, like, like, it's still the best festival, I think. Sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. A festival, a real gathering of people should have no real reason to happen. That's mm -hmm. what the best. Except for drinking. Yeah, well, yeah, but the drinking is what you're there for. But like the actual, like, okay, let's go celebrate St. Patrick's Day. You know, just go out and, like, you're just look, looking for the excuse to do it, right. right? Cinco de Mayo, you know, who gives a fuck what Cinco de Mayo means? Couldn't even tell you. It was like they got liberated from the French or something, uh, right? Oh, something yeah. retarded. That's exactly what happened. Is it really? It is something like that. Something <laughs> fucking stupid. And But we get to just put on uh, fake mustaches and sombreros and drink yeah. Coronas and, yeah, and yeah. crush fucking tequila and... Try finger some girl at a bar in Midtown. You know, you do the Macarena or whatever. Like, it doesn't even matter. Like, the, the date could be wrong. It just like, the whole point is just getting together. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of doing that like a fake bachelor party sometime. Trying to organize like a fake bachelor party without telling anyone. Mm. Just be like, yo, my, my cousin Tom, he's having a bachelor party. <laughs> it's in Vegas for the weekend. <laughs> We're inviting everybody. It's going to be wild. And then just, they're like, all right, cool. Yeah. And then everyone shows up. But there is no Tom. I just made Tom up. And we all just go get nuts. We all just fuck hookers. We do a lot of coke. We fuck hookers. We're like, yo, we'll just find some random kid and we'll dress him up and haze him a bit. Like, ah, it's, 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 it's that's the Tom. He's getting he's getting married next week. This guy. He's getting married next week. This guy. That's the whole point of the festival. So there you go. I do like some of these oh, yeah. stories of how like retarded the Irish people still are to this very day. <laughs> like it's what also the, that part of Ireland they still had like a re fixed marriages until. In Kerry? Oh, wow. Yeah, it, like in the real rural parts of Ireland, yeah. they had fixed marriages up until the 50s or something, where it's like someone would be like, You're not, your son is not marrying my daughter without you giving me a couple of sheep. Yeah. He's Dowry. like, dude, <laughs> dude, you have, you have, your daughter ain't worth no two sheep. My daughter's worth two sheep. Come on. Give him a dance. Give him a dance. And the How daughter, the daughter's sheep? like 14 trying to do the dance. <laughs> yeah. Doing a little fucking the river dance. A little jig. And then they would go into the pub. They'd go into the pub and they'd sit down in the corner of the pub and they'd, they'd fucking negotiate. And then they'd come out and they'd either go, deal. So and, if they ha and, and if they had a deal, um, the village would, they'd get to eat an apple. Yeah. This is legit. Really? <laughs> like that was like the, they would they would share an apple. To be like, I'll never forget the day. You no, know, my cousin uh, Myra got uh, engaged or sold off, and um, they brought out an apple, and we all got to take a slice. I feel like I've heard that. And they all go like fucking. <laughs> then they do a little apple dance. <laughs> oh, I had an apple cause my cousin was sold for a couple of sheep, and uh, it's a it's a it's a fucked up place. It's a fucked up place. My friend's dad, may he rest in peace, he was from a place in Ireland, like rural, rural farmland, hillbilly bullshit. And they didn't even have running toilets or something or, or electricity to the 20s, something like crazy. Jesus. And when he was born and raised, so he, he grew up in the 40s or the 50s, like we're talking rural, crazy, inbred, hillbilly bullshit. Mm -hmm. They didn't have shoes. They just like... And but that's not that wasn't uncommon in, or even in Dublin to just not have shoes, right? Because you just couldn't afford shoes. So everyone was so poor they would just walk around like hobbits, <laughs> right? And what the, the dads told my friend was uh when he was a little boy, during the summer it would get so hot that your feet would be all like sticky and sweaty and smelly, mm. that you could walk through the fields and you could find some old cow paddy, mm. like a cow shit, just like a big huge cow shit. And that would get it would get really cold. For some reason, cow shit can hold the cold, mm -hmm. or it wouldn't get hot. And you could and you they would stand in the cow shit, 
had to cool their feet off. Holy shit. <laughs> that's that's the that that's what they did as a treat. That was like a yeah. that was like a yeah. they did that like as a fun thing to do. Oh my god! And all, all the parents would be like, "Would you get your feet out of that shit? <laughs> would you ever get to work? Get your feet off that shit, will you? You get on. All right, you can you can only stand in the shit on weekends." <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. So that's like, that's just like the level of poverty that a lot of these places in Ireland went through. You got to get, a, you got to have a slice of an apple. <laughs> if your if your sister was sold that's for a cow, yeah. and then you also got to stand in cow shit when it got so hot, as as a as a as a way, as a as a just a nice little <laughs> summer's afternoon way to um, get over your stuff. All right, listen. Let's get into the big topics today. Um, um, we got Trump raid Fonzie live on the scene He's going to tell us all about what's going on the big I feel guy. like Trump is done Can we move on? I think we got to let the, let the guy get back on Twitter Let him start peddling some steaks He needs oh, to yeah. just be out He needs to be just selling shirts or Bring whatever the apprentice Bring back the apprentice and sweet. go, wait, when I was president <laughs> and doing all his type of shit. So they raided him over this, um, the Capitol riot, or at least nobody really knows. There's a lot of um, speculation that um, Mara Lago, is that the same place where um, the Mar pedophile was? Yeah. Mara Lago? Yeah. How do I say it? Mara Lago. Lago? I've yeah. been saying Lego like a dickhead. <laughs> um, cut that, clip that, okay. edit that. No problem. Make sure when they watch this back, I was saying it right the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So just, just like in your voice, just over, dub over. Ah. Lago, Lago. Yeah. Absolutely. So the FBI agents, um, they went and they searched uh, Donald Trump's fucking house um, in Palm Beach, Florida. Yeah, it's right beside, um, who was the guy who killed himself, didn't get Jeffrey Epstein? Mm. So Absolutely. this is the same little area. You're going yeah. full CNN, dude. Epstein killed himself. Trump's guilty. I didn't say he was guilty. <laughs> I didn't say that. You you get funds, he gets fucking fired up. Sometimes know, I'll just like, I'll, I'll offer a neutral opinion on something. And he's like, sound <laughs> fucking liberal to me. Cuck, cuck, cuck. Um, I, and I also said he did or did not kill himself, Epstein. Mm. I'm just making sure we got the facts. I think, I think, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. All right, but that's that. <laughs> There must be, someone must have talked about it on a podcast, right? Go find that episode. <laughs> someone must have brought that up once. Um, anyway, so tell us exactly what's going on. What are they blaming him for with the Capitol, Fonzie? With the Capitol, apparently just he, instigating he, he, a he insurrection. Wrote, he said, stand back and stand down, right? Doesn't that sound like fucking don't do nothing? Stand back, stand by. Sounds like it. Right. Stand by, that, does, that means stop. Right? Yeah. That also means stop. Doesn't mean yeah. charge. Mm. So I don't know why they're still bringing this up when the country's well, in the fucking ruins right now. Apparently, someone informed the FBI that he had like classified documents in Mar-a-Lago that he didn't give back. And when you're not president anymore, you're supposed to give back any like archives that you have. So they were tipped that he had classified documents and then they went and raided him. Broke no. into his safe. They which, broke into his safe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently they, they, they took the saws all to his safe and then I saw something his his son was saying that it was empty anyway. That doesn't sound good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, joke's <laughs> on you. There's nothing in that safe. It's it's buried in his uh, wife's uh, fucking... The tomb? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the tomb he just put on the golf course. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear all his stuff is in the ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like an Indiana Jones <laughs> style. Yeah, yeah, you got a pot. Of, you got to get a hole in one on the second in order to, in order to fucking. Yeah, Her exactly. skeleton's just solid gold. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone says he's broke. He says he's a billionaire. Who are you supposed to believe? I don't know what's going on. All I know is he fucking. He needs me down there to fucking just fucking protect him. <laughs> I, I, I would love that. I would if I would do that for free. As like a passion project, yeah. just be like a Trump security guy. And I just fucking walk around like this, dressed like a trucker, <laughs> just fucking <laughs> absolutely fucking crushing it for fucking Trump. And so he came out. What did he say in response to all this stuff? And it is Dave tweet. Dave uh, Smith tweeted something about like, it's a shame that fucking Trump doesn't have. Um, it's a shame that Trump doesn't have Twitter right now. Because it would have been like the best, most oh, fun live. He's like, they are raiding the home. <laughs> <laughs> they are coming for us. They will find nothing. 
Um. <clears throat> uh, yeah. What? So what else? What happened? What else happened then, Alfonso? So they went in. They found nothing. They raided the place. So yeah, far, so I mean, they took a bunch of boxes out, and I guess it's still too early to like tell if they found anything. But yeah, apparently mishandling classified information in any capacity is a crime. So maybe they'll try to book them for that. Yeah, they'll never catch him. He's too he's yeah. too good. They'll never get him locked up. None of these guys ever go locked up. Like the impeachment, that means nothing. All that shit means nothing. Yeah, and then what about like, you know, genuinely all the stuff with Hillary? That was, we just turned our backs on That's that. That's the thing. It's like she was getting in, investigated in 2016 for like the same the same crime. Not returning Bill Clinton's information? Well, her email. She was the Secretary of State and she had like a bunch of was she, oh, emails. So it was the same crime. Yeah. There you go. So Trump probably learned, like the way I learned about trauma bonding. Mm. I learned it from the fucking best. Mm. <clears throat> the Clintons knew exactly what they were doing first. Exactly. Hell yeah. And what did, did, did has Hillary came out and spoken about this? Oh, well, apparently. Trump broke the news of the raid himself, complaining in a statement Monday evening that an unannounced raid. It's a raid. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Unannounced. <laughs> <laughs> Who shows up at a house unannounced? Um, the raid was reportedly part of an investigation into whether the former president mishandled classified information after leaving the White House. While Trump's team did not did return materials to the National Archives, federal authorities were informed all the government property was not returned. All right, but what like what's that? Sometimes you leave a job and you don't give them back the the laptop, the company laptop. That's like, come on. Are they not worth enough money to just be like, let it go? <laughs> let it go. Do we think Trump's on a fucking run again? Will he get back in? I think this just I gotta it. tell you. I gotta tell you. And I don't give a fuck if this gets me cancelled. Let's go. I want him back. Let's go. We need him. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like in that fucking, uh, that, was that, that Tom Cruise movie with um, fucking uh, J uh, Jack Nicholson? He goes, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. He goes, you need me to do the things you don't want to do. And that's kind of with Trump. I'd love to have him back. It would just be, you know, it's too boring right now. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of Biden. Biden's grown on me huge. Every time you see him, he's walking into a wall or he's, <laughs> or he's, he's petting a plant. You know, it's like every time you see Speaking him. in tongues. Yeah. yeah. Sniffing just, a young girl. He's a legend. He's just like your old forgetful grandfather uh, who just like, you're like, are you smoking dope, granddad? <laughs> Don't tell your mom. <laughs> you're like, yes, I love him. But all things considered, it, you know what? The, the country's just as bad as it's always been, right? Yeah, I'm sure there's some stats now Fonzie will tell me that actually Trump had a better economy <laughs> but the truth is none of these guys do anything we might as well have Trump just rallying up the fucking troops upsetting all these women just grabbing bitches by the pussy it was a great time to be alive <laughs> at the time it was anno annoying and I remember going thank God, thank God Biden will come in and he'll just, just, just mellow out and we won't have to pick sides every day mm. and then now it's just like, fuck. It's like, fuck, I'm bored. I missed the action. <laughs> yeah, it's like the guy who shows up for like the, the bank robbery. He's like, I told you I was out. And then he just shows up one day with his backpack. He goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. You needed this. <laughs> I would vote for him, I guess. If I could vote. I can't vote. I was just going to say, yeah. Well, not yet. Yeah. But hopefully I can vote soon enough. One of these days. I wonder who my first guy will be. Chances are I'll never vote. To be honest, I don't really believe I don't it. exercise my right to vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have the right to also not vote, so I'm not going to exercise that right now. You you be voting much? Uh, Yeah, occasionally. Occasionally? Yeah. For what? Uh, Just some bullshit. Just the president bullshit? Yeah, yeah. Registered in New York? Yeah. That's, it's, such, it's such a waste of time. Yeah. It's like such a landslide yeah, done. that it's like, why bother? Mm -hmm. We live in a yeah, place where it's blue. It's blue. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. So why bother leaving your house? Right. On Tuesday. I used to do the same thing in Ireland. What I do is I would go and vote because everyone's like, people fought and died for your right to vote. That's all they say. But I, like, they always say that. So I was like, then I would go vote and I would spoil my vote. Mm -hmm. I would like put an X just through everything and then I'd like <laughs> show it. In. It counts. It counts. It's like, I don't yeah. believe in this menu of shit. Well, what I did was one time I drew a cock, right? <laughs> so there's like, there's eight people. 
So you draw a cock in the first one, it's coming on the first person, and then it's like dripping down all of the people. And you lob it in there. You go, yo, democracy, bitch. Democracy, baby. Anyway, I think I'm the, I should fucking get fucking roiled up. I think fucking... You get, tr you get Trump, daddy. Let's go. I just need to get jacked. I think I could be a good security guard if I could just get these fucking... What's that? 2008. Oh, no. 2009. Yeah. I gotta keep going to 2022. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> January 6th. Oh, January 6th was not Trump's fault. <laughs> January 6th was not Trump's fault. Who Side is job. Ray Epps? <laughs> Oof. Maybe that could be a fucking uh, an episode we do someday. Where I just fucking I lift weights the entire time we do and ask me anything. Mm. Like last week when we did this, the the. Uh, Last week we did the fucking the pot. Hell yeah. Did a little pot. We did a little pot. We smoked a little reefer. We had a good time. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved that episode. That was a good time. <laughs> yeah, I was fucking. I'm getting old, man. Like I can't. My arm is kind of sore from that, to be honest. And um, we're getting old. I fucking. I, I was out with uh, Lil Sasquatch this weekend. You guys know Lil. Remember Lil, friend of the show, friend of the show, yeah. son of a boy dad, co-host <laughs> with Roan. Roan, my age, Lil Sasquatch. Underage, he's twenty one, but it's like weird. That's crazy. So we're we like he needed an opener, and I was available. So I was like, let's go go do this, which is it's fun because he sells out his shows, right? Um, but it's not fun because I'm opening for a guy who's been doing comedy for six days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing to be this old. I'm thirty nine. And then I'm just some, some fucking 21 year old walks out. And I'm like, oh, all these 21 year olds are so young, right? And everyone's just going, you're old, you're gay, get off the stage. Yeah. And then we went to a couple of fucking, we went to a couple of po college parties. I don't even know how there's college parties in the summer, but we were like, I yeah, showed right. up at these places. They're just empty. There's like four floors of empty apartments and there's balconies and it's in Providence, which is a dump, by the way. Uh, God help you if you lived there, go to college there, even travel, even driving through it, you want to just get the fuck out of Providence. Oh, yeah. Fucking stinks. What a relevant fucking city. But I was just, I found myself a few times at these parties just being like fucking, uh, just the old gay guy. <laughs> Some guy comes up to me. He's like, "Oh my god, you're Irish! I love the Irish." It's like, "How old are you?" I was like, "I'm 32." And he's like, "Jesus, what are you doing here?" I was like, "Ah!" He's like, "Free beers! I'm taking the free beers." I think I left at one one of the nights. We we went to some random fucking party, and then I think I just looked around. I was like, "I can't be the old fag." It's like, but it's not, and it's it's not like I'm the 32 year old. People like the the young hot girls. By the way, every girl in her 20s, like early 20s, is just hot. Yeah. That just that's just the rule, and I remember going through this before with like sixteen year olds. I remember when I was a sixteen year old, not thinking that all the girls around me were hot. Then I got to like eighteen or nineteen. I remember just being like, "Man, I should have fucked those sixteen year olds when I had the chance. <laughs> should have done it. I should have done it." And now I'm now I'm thirty two. So there's girls who are twenty years old that when I was twenty, I would not fuck. Like I'm I'm at the stage right. now. It's like. If I was 20 years old and that girl came up to me and was like, hey, do you want to fuck? I would have been like, no, get away from me. Now I'm like, oh, yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> wow. I don't care if you're fat and ginger <laughs> and you got book two and one eye. You're just so tight. <laughs> Everything's so smooth. Because uh, there's a weird thing. Women, man, one day they just exhale and they can never back inhale again. It's just they just they start to deflate, uh, you know? All right. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> I'm not that age yet. How old are you? 24. So if you're at the age probably 24, where it's like my friends are 32, you're probably like, wow. Fucking like, like almost like a cougar-esque of a... Yeah, I would, oh, I would love to fuck what, a 32 buy me, what, she's gonna buy me some carbonara? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, look at this. Yeah, a 32-year-old is like... That is hot. There's a thing. But I, I've gone through that too, where it's like... A 40 year old woman, I'm like, wow, she's right. so, this woman, like, she's old, she's mature, she's like, she's <laughs> in good shape for a 40 year old. And meanwhile, her husband's like, take her, take her, please. <laughs> Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> wouldn't fuck her, wouldn't touch her with a shitty pipe, my friend. <laughs> Absolutely not. I don't wonder what that's called, but I'm just saying, and I, I'm sure I saw this in a movie before. Um, where the grandfather was like, yo, fuck kids while you have the chance. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Did you ever God. see that one? Ameri uh, Little Miss Sunshine? And the grandfather oh, goes, 
Oh, yeah. yeah, Little Miss Sunshine with um, the guy from The Office. Yeah, and they go on tour and the grandfather's advice, he turns around to the, like, the, the nephew one day, or the grandson, yeah. he goes, any advice? He goes, fucking make sure you fuck 15 year olds while you can't have a chance because you, you'll never have a chance again. <laughs> one of my uncles literally said that at a party once. And we, we all just looked at each other and like, oh, He's not it. wrong. <laughs> okay, dude. Yeah, yeah, we were. You know, yeah, it's like it's like trying the cuisine while you're fucking there. You know, get the paella. <laughs> You'll like, never. You gotta lay as much got, pipe as you can, dude. <laughs> fucking a fifteen year old while you're fifteen is like just eating a uh, Philly cheesesteak while you're there. Mm. You know, you you gotta do it while you're there. Yeah, and because you you'll <laughs> never. You know, no one wants to eat a Philly cheesesteak in New York oh, or no. or even in Philly. They're horrible. They're the worst sandwich anyone's ever made. I rarely Disagree. get them. They're disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're fucking such a shit sandwich. It's a drunk late night treat at best. Yeah, even then it's like, fuck, they didn't have anything better. It's like something they'd sell at a fucking baseball game. Just all that shit. And they do. Dirty whiz all over your fucking... Fuck, the, yeah. best. the best. No, the whiz stinks. <laughs> the fried onions? Oh, uh, fried onions. You can shove fried onions up my ass and I'll still eat them. Um, <laughs> they'll get eight, but like that's that's not just part of the sandwich. That's, what do you the, think caramelized oh, means? The bread. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's like, what's going on? Look. You know, what's going on with Dane Cook then? Let's get into it. Let's oh, yeah, speak Get the fuck out of here. And I'm the only one saying it. I'm defending the guy. <laughs> I'm defending Dane Cook. Let it be known. Comedians got to stick together. Didn't know what we said during the cancel culture movement? Comedians, you're allowed to say whatever you want. All my friends got canceled, got SNL taken away from them, <laughs> or couldn't podcast for four weeks. All my friends got cancelled in the way that it actually helped the career and nothing changed at all. Um, so, comedians supposed to stick together. So, Dane Cook got engaged. Congratulations to Dane Cook. Congrats, Dane Big Cook. Big friend of the show, Dane Cook. What a <laughs> legend. But, uh, remember Dane Cook and he did his observations on fucking... Burger King. Doors yeah. or whatever. Burger King? Did he have a Burger King oh, bit? he had a whole long Burger King bit. Yeah. What was the Burger King bit? He was calling it the BK Lounge and shit. Oh. I guess he used to work at one. Mm. Legendary. Interesting. Pull up this information and find out why we're supposed to be mad at him. He looks like a fucking freak these days. He is a ugly cunt. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a shame because he's a good looking guy and then he obviously had some like facelifts and shit. Yeah. He's got like a puffy face. It's weird. He has a puffy face. That's what, it, yeah. From drinking, is it? Could be. It looks like plastic surgery, honestly. Yeah, he like, definitely has some plastic surgery. His whole, his whole face, he looks like fucking. You see, he got stung by a bunch of bees. Right, yeah, exactly. Mm. Creepy comic. Dan Cook, 50. <laughs> Meth fiance, <laughs> Taylor, 23. 23, when she was just. She was just 17. 17. And if you know what, what I mean. I mean. Ow. Yeah, why don't we fucking get fucking <laughs> Paul McCartney up on these charges <laughs> right now? What's going on? Um, uh, he met her when she was just seventeen. All right, does it look? There's a chance that he he just was at a. You could have done. You could do this to me with the fucking <laughs> pedo party I was just at in Providence. <laughs> There's probably a group photo, and I'm with some fucking teens, and I'm just like going, "Oh, yeah. I hate this." Yeah. But as soon as she turns twenty, hit me up, babes. <laughs> Um, so then Crook met his fiance Kelsey Taylor when she was scroll down when she was just 17 uh, writers revealed the comedian 50 pose with Kelsey now 22 during a game night at his LA house that's crazy kind of crazy Whoa. in 2016 um, when she was just a teenager is, is a cunty word though because if it's 19 hmm. I don't know what the answer is to any of this stuff like he wants to fuck a hot girl and women are only hot until they're 24. So what's the answer here? What do we do? How does he get laid? You don't marry them. That's kind of sick. Right? Isn't marrying a girl who's 23 sick in the head? Like dating a girl. It's, I was just going to say, it's just why would you even want to put yourself through that? I don't know. I can't even imagine a world where I'd... Dane what are Cook. they talking about? They're, she, he, she's thir twenty three. He's fifty years old. He's not really an intellectual, though. No. Like I've, I've never heard him say anything profoundly interesting, no. other than the difference between Coca Cola and Pepsi or whatever <laughs> style of wacky comedy that he would do. He's like Coke. <laughs> I actually like Dan Cook in fairness, but <laughs> his circle is great. It's <laughs> it, he's an easy guy to take shots at. However, um, 
This guy, look, this writer, Tracy Egan Morrison, undercovered old photos Dane posted on his Instagram while she was still a minor. Yeah, that don't look good. But he also, he didn't undercover. This is just like, red. this has been around for years, these photos. Right. He didn't find them. Um, And uh, there was 2016, it was a game night, which is weird. Why would you even do that? Um, My best friend. Comedian Dan Cook, 50, is engaged to girlfriend Kelsey Taylor, 23. That's gay, too. You just go, yo, she's young. I'm not going to give another good 10 years out of her, maybe. Um, look, it's a weird one because he's not doing anything illegal. Right? Right. So what's the what are the rules here? <laughs> if it's legal. Yeah, like is grooming illegal? Yes. Then that's probably what this is. They think it's grooming? I mean, hanging out with her while she's 16, marrying her five years later. That's like the definition of grooming. No, only if he buys her like a fucking PlayStation or or some makeup or something. Mm. We got to find out. When did they actually start dating? This is it. We're doing, we're running a little fucking detective, like getting to the bottom. Says, getting, that's the, that's the name of the episode. Getting to the bottom of Dane (laughs) Cook detective series and Photoshop me into like a, Almost like a, an Inspector Gadget style jacket, mm. and I, I'm a detective. <laughs> Getting to the bottom. So of they all. started dating. They became Instagram official when she was 18, and he. Oh, was she 25. was just 18. <laughs> the comedic, the comic later said in an Instagram Q and A that he met Kelsey at a game night in his house, adding, "We were friends for a while, and soon after fell in like with each other." And then upgraded to love. All right, very selective language. Very uh, (laughs) stupid language. Oh, Kim. Kim broke up with Pete, I guess, right? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Da, he'll be fine. He's always depressed. (laughs) Apparently, he had to go to therapy or something, or he's he's in some sort of a, almost like a halfway house to try to deal with the trauma of um, Kanye West making fun of him. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what you want. Again, why is it that she was fine? Why is it that she's fine? She's 109 years old and Pete Davidson just fucking turned 21. And for some reason, when she sucks him off, it's fine. Right. But for some reason then, Dane Cook cracks open a 16-year-old and then marries. By the way, he it's so much better that he married her. It's yeah, so much better. Yeah, yeah. If Dane Cook just fucked this girl once and then never talked to her again, that's like a crazy stuff. He's in love. Love comes in all shapes and sizes. And maybe they'll last another 28 years and he'll die from a botched plastic surgery <laughs> uh, accident, right? <laughs> he's he's like teaming up for the comeback tour again. Yeah. Dane Cook, the comeback tour again. <laughs> another one, another comeback tour. <laughs> so who knows what's going on? I don't know. There's this, this is a weird one. It's a weird one. It's a weird one. Mm-hmm. I do think it's weird he's marrying her. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's more like, come on. It's like covering his tracks almost. Yeah, yeah he kind of has to. He's like, suffering. Fuck, I have to marry It's like getting now. a girl pregnant. You got to marry her. Mm-hmm. I didn't get some whore pregnant. I got my wife pregnant. <laughs> I wasn't just. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing. It's like, well, you think I just do some whore? I was raw dogging my future wife in the back, <laughs> in, the, in the car park of a Chili's one night. Of course, of course we knew we were in love there and then. Um, yeah, anyway, listen, Dane, I got your back. I think it's fine. I think what you did was fine, I think, maybe. <laughs> we need more information. Can yeah. we get him on the phone? Can you ring up Dan Cook there? Google Dan Cook's phone number and see if it comes up. I'm joking, don't even bother. He was the first, uh, it was a game now. Anyway, it's a controversial romance. I'm just, we need to settle on this. Would it, is, it, is it worse if he just fucked her and never talked to her again? Or is it worse now that he's marrying her? Because honestly, I do... I can understand the fucking play a bike and hike and I'll hump and dump and I'll fucking hit it then quit it, my sister. Right? I understand (laughs) all of those things. Yeah. And you shouldn't. We all want to fuck a 17 year old. This is a fact. (laughs) We all know Johnny, Johnny, Johnny just hasn't met the right boy yet. Right? But we all want to fuck 17 year olds. But the whole, there's a certain point when you got to just be like, this is weird. You don't fit. You don't just stop physically finding seventeen-year-olds hot. Pull, 
you pull a Dalia, you go, they say you're 17, you go text me in a year. They say 17, you say 18, did you say? Did you say 18? <laughs> Autocorrect's I, crazy. I heard I heard 18. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I fucked a girl years and years ago, back when I was in college. I must have been 20. And she and she was in high school. And I remember I checking her ID because she I was like making sure she was old enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went home with her. Yeah, I think I I can't even remember. I was. But it's so funny even looking back now because I was young. I was nineteen or twenty, and there was a girl there, and her older sister went to the college, right. and she was like a coming uh, visiting, yeah, some bullshit like that. And then she was like, "Let's go home together." And I was like, "I'm not going home with you. I don't think you're of age." And then she showed me her passport, and I rallied her. <laughs> rallied her. <laughs> it, got, it got nothing on me. <laughs> I think I was fine, though, right? I think it's fine to check someone's ID. Yeah, if it all a checks out. Akon didn't do it. No. Also, I was 20. Realistically, the idea of a 20-year-old banging a 17-year-old is like not really a... No, that's you, a nothing. That's you could have dated in high school. No one would have thought anything of it. You know what I mean? I could have dated a girl. Yeah, yeah. That age difference. That Nowadays, age. seventy. I just can't even imagine the conversation. I, I, I like. Oh I just think. I'm like, so, uh, what's your favorite subject in school? <laughs> what's and, your favorite oh, Olivia Rodriguez? Oh, song? so, oh, you see, oh, Black Lives Matter. Tell me more. <laughs> oh, what, what other <laughs> dumb shit have you got? <laughs> that's that they them pussy. <laughs> oh, I, I'd love. I'm not fuck them. <laughs> I'd love to fuck them. I'd fuck That's them all night. That's that she, they pussy, that non-binary. <laughs> That'd be awesome to bang a chick who doesn't identify or whatever. Sure. Any of you who's got close to that? I fucked some lesbians in my day. Yeah. Now, not bisexuals. Like, I fucked lesbians. You can tell they didn't like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> I fucked a hardcore, hairy... Lesbians, like a butch, yeah. Yeah, you know what? And sometimes these girls, they'll tell you, they just wanted it. They, they're like, I miss the feeling of cum. <laughs> <laughs> they say that it's like they just need a little bit of change, dude. They, just need, they, yeah. they, they need a glazed belly. They do. They go, oh, I miss that glazed belly, and then they rub their little fucking pop belly. This, oh, <laughs> a little lesbian. <laughs> Every lesbian got a little pop. Oh, belly. they got a little le <laughs> Yeah, she got a little. Fuck, she just rub, rub her little lesbian belly. Rub it tell me. Absolutely, yeah, just rub it, rub it for good luck. Get that yeah. come in there. Rubbing a lesbian's tummy does bring you good luck. And they yeah, might, they, they probably get sick of dildos and stuff too. I, 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 I can't for sure guarantee you, but I imagine a dildo, even with all its bells and whistles, it's never the same as just a regular tiny cock. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not the same as a tiny little meat It's a stick. drunk fat guy huffing and puffing in your ear. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, does, does, does does your dildo have bad breath? <laughs> will, will you, does your dildo say, I'm about to come? Is it gonna happens. Is it going to cry after? <laughs> does, <laughs> does he say, hey, look, I got a meeting in the morning. You got to you gotta scram. The, the whole part of the mating ritual is gone. I don't know if you, but I know even there's a very funny lesbian comic from Texas I met one time. She was like, yeah, I'll fuck guys sometimes if it's just like, it's just like Lee. <laughs> she's like just out of yeah. It's I love that. She's like you know it's like six a.m. The party's died down. She's oh. her and some guy. She's like da. Good for her. I'd rather not. <laughs> but she, she's like a lesbian, lesbian, like proper. You wouldn't have not You wouldn't like. like she's stud. like she would not even be confused as a as a real person. Mm. Pr absolute lesbian. Mm. You ever fuck a lesbian? Uh, no. Never. I've, I've never fucked two girls. Have you ever had a threesome? Fonzie had the threesome? Yeah. A threesome king? We can't talk about this on the show. Well, then you should have said no. <laughs> you should have said no. Well, <laughs> for those who are listening, I wanted you to know. <laughs> All right, fair enough. There we go. That's it. Settle down. D Dane, you're all good in, in our book. All three of us think you're great. Especially the booth. I think it's a little bit shifty. Mm. All right, uh, the death of a let no fuck that. Let's talk about the OnlyFans um, and the Facebook or Meta as we call it these days. Tell yeah. us what's going on here, Fonzie. Okay, please. so OnlyFans apparently was squashing competitors in the online porn industry by like kind of doxing other people on Instagram that were using like you know, selling sex type of stuff, like on third party accounts that weren't OnlyFans. So like Patreon or something? Yeah. So Or whatever the 
But but the thing that is like weird is that they were marking them as like terrorists. Oh really? So these like girls who just like you know are they got that bomb ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Legend. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll go on Instagram. Yeah, so they reported them as terrorists for just flashing their titties on Instagram. Look, it's a dog eat dog world, you know, and this is what the pimps do. You're up, they're fucking, you're selling fucking pussy on their corner. <laughs> they're about to show up and beat the shit out of your pimp. Exactly. This is it. This is the world that we're living in. The digital pimp. The, it's a digi it's a digital pimp. <laughs> mm, my something. <laughs> it's a digital pimp, my ninja. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do an impression of a, of a pimp without uh, getting myself in trouble. Um, yeah, so pretty much if you were a whore selling photos of your <laughs> whore bits and you were decided not to be on OnlyFans, but you went onto one of the other websites, whichever they may be, you know, obviously Patreon tried it for a little bit and never really took off. Mm -hmm. There's loads of these donation sites that never really took off. Mm -hmm. And OnlyFans became the official porn one. They they gobbled up that fucking industry. Also, OnlyFans tried to jump into their uh, mainstream for a while too. They were like, we're getting away from the sluts. Fucking Legion of Skanks was on OnlyFans for a while. Do you remember that? Really? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why Legion of Skanks ended up doing that extra episode a week. They 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 signed like a two month contract, oh. and so every Thursday they were, they were going OnlyFans, and then Big J had a show on OnlyFans for a while where he would like interview whores. Nice. He'd be like, so <laughs> like Jay just on his own in a room. <laughs> Isn't that just, the SDR show? Well, pretty much, yeah, but yeah. it was just him one on one talking nice. to girls. He's like, "So you like to shove bottles in your pussy?" And then he just do <laughs> and speak on that. Yeah, and he talk over them, <laughs> doing impressions. Yeah, yeah. Even the horse like Ah, it's funny that they they they've actually grown that rumor that Big J just talks over everyone. He's, he does a lot, but every comic does it. But it was like became the thing. It's like Jay won't fuck. Jay never shuts up. It's so funny. Um. So where did the leak come from this, Fonzie? This Let is us like know. someone sued them, so it's like public now, yeah. Someone filed suit against OnlyFans and Meta, which is just Facebook, because mm -hmm. they said that they were shadow banned and that it's crippling their ability to promote their business and devastating their incomes. Yeah, which makes sense because... I mean, what are these girls, like LLC'd? I don't, I don't get it. Um, yeah, I just don't know how they got in. Who who got the money? Sellers of the smutty which were then shadow banned across Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and other sites. This, this, this suits allege. Targeted accounts also included businesses, celebrities, influencers, and others who have nothing to do with terrorism, according to the suit. <laughs> Tell me, maybe fucking uh, Ryan Long got fucking gobbled up. Is this the one? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're not shadow banned. Maybe you just don't want to see you. <laughs> I, this is the one. This is, an, this is not a great example of my OnlyFans didn't work, so they must have shadow banned mm -hmm. me. That's when you hear all these like unfunny right-wing comics going, yeah. I'm shadow banned. And you're like, no, we all see it. No <laughs> one is interacting with your fucking critical race theory in the f school opinions. <laughs> When I heard that my content may be listed on the terror watch list, I was outraged. Alana Evans, an adult performer and one of the plaintiffs in the California near suit alongside Kelly Pierce and others told the post, I was angry because it affected my income when my social media traffic dropped significantly. significantly and I was angry because I am the daughter of a veteran who fought for this country. Oh yeah, I'm sure he's so proud. <laughs> Scroll down there. Let's have a look at her knockers. Whoa, whoa, they're big. Okay, okay. They're big on the screen. Alana Evans, um, blah, blah, blah. Do they have any response? Did Matthew come out with any response? Did OnlyFans come out with any response? Is there a OnlyFans single? said, yeah. we are aware that these cases have been filed. We are not aware of any evidence which supports these allegations. The alleged participants have all publicly stated that these cases have no merit. So they're just denying it. Did they lose it? Is it has it just been filed or did they already lose the case? It seems like it just like went public. So it's just filed. Yeah, it was just filed. The lawyers claim they have acquired a list of more than twenty one thousand Instagram accounts they say were unfairly tagged as potential terrorists previously unreported California Superior Court filing show. Twenty one thousand as terrorist attacks. All right. <laughs> That's 
Oh, oh, who's she? She's hot. That's another plaintiff. Go down. A plaintiff? Whatever you want to call her. I have mm. Kelly Price. Scroll down. Kelly that Pierce is another plaintiff. Whatever. <laughs> what what <laughs> you got against dudes looking hot? <laughs> it's covering too much. <laughs> it's covering too much. <laughs> uh, Kelly Pierce is another plaintiff in the co- Yeah, so good for her. Well, <laughs> Kelly Kelly should be the face of the movement. The other one needs to back off and send the <laughs> lick the stamps. Yeah, Whatever yeah, she yeah. needs to do. But this this only is Dan's ca- down here. <laughs> only Dan. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, this look, this is what it is. It's a doggy dog world. This is business, and that's a bi- good business move is to blackmail <laughs> these fucking companies into evaporating the competition. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to ha- make money, you should have been with OnlyFans. <laughs> I don't know what like feet.com bullshit you sign up for, but this is how we play the fucking game. I love it. Absolute pimp. Bitch. You ain't happy? <laughs> you ain't happy while we hover you? Yeah, you go to the other. Let's see what happens. See what happens. It's the equivalent of, again, of an L fucking slap. Where Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, Zuckerberg comes down. Um, uh, 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 what does it say? Uh, uh, we are not aware. We are not aware of any misconduct on our website. My name is Mark Zuckerberg. Um, go hit the corner, you bottom bitch. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> Bitch, better have. <laughs> bitch, bitch, better have my money. You won't want to see me angry, bitch. I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. I didn't. You, you, why do you make me act that way? I wish you didn't make me act that way. No, it's not addictive. Have some of this. It's great. All the girls love it. Where's my money, bitch? <laughs> Just pimp fucking Zuckerberg. So she just trauma bonds with you? Yeah, he's just getting all the girls hooked on heroin and stuff. He's like, this will keep you up all night. You'll love it. Now go get me some money, you crack whore. <laughs> you dirty <laughs> slut bitch. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. You're a princess. Don't ever talk to me in public, whore bitch. <laughs> nice. Good for Z- fucking Zuckerberg out there doing his thing. Um, all right. Let's wrap it up. Folks, we got to get out of here. It was a short episode today. We had a lot of fun. Fonzie um, did a great job producing the episode, brought Thank some you. news articles to the um, podcast today. And Johnny Cakes. Johnny Cakes. Johnny Cakes. <laughs> Johnny Cakes. Always crushing on the ones and twos over there. Uh, make sure you head off to Patreon if you want more um, podcasts. And if not, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, guys. Good luck.